Managing design control processes is very often linked to frustration. For many companies, this is a time-consuming task that holds the company back and prolongs the time to market. But managing these processes shouldn't be this difficult. And in this video, we'll show you how we do it in Medical Device PLM. So this video will be a demonstration of uh, our Medical Device PLM solution and how we manage design controls with the design history file and device master record. First, we control things through what we call a project record. And to find the project records that we have in the system, I go to design and project records. If I do a search for my active projects here, I can see that I have four active projects. I can see the name, number, uh, whether or not it is released, if it is in change, uh, the status of uh, each project. I can also see the start date and estimated finish date. And as if we see, all of our projects have what we call a deliverable matrix. What we can also see is that we of course have this health status, which is uh, a traffic light system uh, that indicates whether or not we are on track or off track with uh, the project. I can see that uh, in this case, one of my projects are off track. For me as a project manager now, it is interesting to find out, so why are we actually off track? The way for me to find that out is to open the deliverable matrix. The deliverable matrix is a list of all the deliverables that I have to deliver during this project. This is a project called the MRI Super Series 2020. And the deliverable matrix is everything I have to deliver in order to have this project completed. If we look at it, it is the uh, deliverables are arranged in according to which phase we expect them to be delivered in. Since phase one is in bold, that means that this is now the active phase, the phase that I'm actually working on. If I want to see the deliverables, deliverables for this phase, I just expand and I get all the deliverables listed. And as we see, we can also have subphases. So we can have phase one, one A, one B, one C, and so on. This can be used, for instance, if you have a product where you need it to launch in different markets at different times. Then you could have one phase is release for Europe, one is release for US, one released for China, and so on. When I look at the deliverables I have here for phase uh, one, I can see that uh, most of them are on track, but the one device specification here is off track. I can also see that I actually have uh, the link to the actual document here also. And these deliverables and deliverable matrix is automatically created based upon templates. So. We have templates for all the different uh, deliverables we need to have. We also have a um, template for the actual deliverable matrix. And when we create a new project, the deliverable matrix itself is instantiated, but also the actual deliverables are also created for us. So we don't have to do it. If I scroll a little bit to the right on this deliverable matrix, I see that I also have a bit more information here. I of course have the planned due date. I can also set who should actually be the owner, who should be responsible for this uh, deliverable. And for that, we can use the project roles. So you can have a team of project members and each can have a role and you can assign each deliverable to a member of the project. We also have what we call a closing. The cl closing rule it was, is what tells the system that this deliverable is actually done. Um, and and this is what triggers the system to actually update the status of the deliverable itself or the deliverable line. We have by owner, meaning that this is something that the, the responsible for it, in this case, the innovator admin, he can then go in and say, okay, I am now done with this and signal to the system that it's done and that will update the status. The way to do this is just right click and say close deliverable. Once this is done, you see the health status automatically changes to closed. What we can also see is that the, uh, we can indicate where in our uh, DHF and DMR do we want this uh, deliverable, the actual documentation 
to be placed. Because we also have templates for DHF and DMR and we, and we relate the templates to the actual deliverable matrix. So when we create the deliverable matrix, we don't, not only create the, the list of deliverables, the deliverable itself, but we also create the DMR and DHF automatically. And each of the documentation in here or deliverables will automatically be placed in the correct section of the structures as we have decided in the template. So now we have seen a small part of the functionality that we have inside of the medical device PLM solution. There are much more functionality inside with regards to risk management, with regards to traceability matrix and so on.